Well, hello everybody. It's uh, Joe Butler with the St. Augustine Outdoorsman. And uh, welcome today. I want to uh, thank you for stopping by watching this short video. Today we're going to be talking about three things I learned from my grandparents. Three things I learned from Grandma and Grandpa. One of the first things that uh, I want to talk about is something we learned uh, was natural farming or natural gardening. Uh, my grandparents were, both sides of my family, were farmers. My dad's uh, dad was a sharecropper up in South Georgia. I never knew him. He died. He was murdered uh, back in 1941 when my dad was a young man. And uh, I never knew him. And so, uh, but I've heard the stories uh, that have been passed on uh, down about farming and different things that was going on. On my other side of the family, my mom's side of the family, my uh, grandfather was a farmer. And uh, he inked out a, a living out of the ground. So one of the things that we learned uh, and that was taught was natural uh, farming or natural gardening. You know, back in the time they were gar they were they were farming, they didn't have all the pesticides, uh, and they weren't pumping all the pesticides and all the chemicals into the ground. And so there was a time where they would. Um, use natural ingredients. You know, one of the fertilizers they used was cow manure or chicken manure, uh, some other kind of manure. And there was natural ways that they grew things. There was natural things that they did to get rid of the pest. And so one of the things that we need to get back to uh, today is the understanding of natural gardening or natural farming. I believe it's a really important thing. You know, we have all the big agri agribusiness um, where the big farms, uh, the little guys are, are being really pushed out. And it's these big farms are coming in. They're using tons and tons and tons of chemicals. You know, I saw um, one place where they were, before the corn grew up, they would go in and they would spray, uh, I won't call the name of the, uh, the pesticide, but if you've done any kind of research or think, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. They would go in and they would spray this pesticide, uh, this chemical on the ground to keep the weeds from coming up and to kill the pest. And then um, as the corn would grow up, they would come back in at another time and they would spray it again. And the people who were using uh, the sprayers and the farmhands were in like chemical suits. They were wearing uh, respirators, they had eye protection, they were wearing white suits, gloves, rubber gloves, rubber boots, and they were spraying that on the food. It was it getting into the ground first, then it was being sprayed on the food. So what do you think happens is that food grows and that ground is saturated with that pesticides and those chemicals. Guess what? Our food began to become uh, consumed and concentrated with these same things. Uh, to get uh, the chickens and, and different animals to market faster, what they would do is pump them full of hormones. And then our kids begin to eat those. And I truly believe that many, many of the things that are happening physically to people is because of all the chemicals, the hormones, the antibiotics that we've put into our uh, animals, into the land, and it's affecting us physically. Um, Back in my grandparents' time, you never heard about people getting cancer like you do now. Um, I truly believe it goes back to not taking care of the land. One of the things that we learned that we learned from Grandma and Grandpa was this: if you take care of the land, the land will take care of you. Let me say that again: if you take care of the land, the land will take care of you. Now, does that mean I'm one of these guys that's uh, um, into the whole global warming thing? No. This is just a real biblical thing because in the Bible, it even talks about taking care of the land. We're stewards of the land that God has given us. And when Israel was given the commandments, they were taught that they were to have certain places where they would let the land just have a Sabbath and it would just rest. And so one of the things that our grandparents learned was that there were certain fields, you would let it rest for a while to grow there, there would be anything on there that would grow, let it rest that year, and then the next year you would go back and you would start all over again. And after so many years, you would let it set and rest. And that was something that was a natural occurrence that occurred. Um, if we take care of the land, the land will take care of us. 
One of the things we need to learn today is we need to grow our own, some of our own food naturally. During this whole coronavirus thing, um, we have learned here in the United States that if the trucks don't roll and people go to the stores and buy things out like crazy, uh, you know, the whole hoarding thing with the toilet paper, toilet paper was gone, wasn't it? Milk, gone. People were storing things and taking things. In our culture, and our economy, we don't have big warehouses that are supporting uh, the store. So yeah, we do. They have, they, they have the big warehouses and they truck it in. But they have to truck it in, don't they? They only have enough of supply to go a certain amount of days before they have to have another truck come. And if there's any breakdown in that process, guess what? That store's not going to have the food, not going to have the produce, not going to have the meat, not going to have the toilet paper or whatever it is that you need in that store. And you can't go there and buy it. So what would happen if we begin as a, as a people to relearn this thing that our grandparents taught us about growing our own food naturally? Right now, we're getting ready to start here uh, at the St. Augustine Outdoorsman. We're getting ready to get our garden started. I know we're going a little late right now. Should have already been uh, done, but uh, better uh, late than never, right? And so we're working on some things to get uh, our garden started. One of the things that we're doing is we're not using any seeds that are GMO. That's genetically modified seeds. I want to encourage you, get heirloom seeds if you can. And uh, there are places that you can go and you can buy heirloom seeds that are not genetically engineered. You see, what happened was, is the scientists began to try to figure out, um, well, we know this particular plant this particular vegetable uh, is more susceptible to uh, this. Give you an example. Cotton was susceptible to the boll weevil. And so what they would do is they would modify that um, seed to be able to make it less susceptible to those pests. And so the engineering, they would begin to engineer and modify it genetically, and it caused problems. Uh, so I want to encourage you, uh, get some heirloom seeds, and let's learn to begin to have a garden. You know, it doesn't have to be big. Maybe you live in the city. Maybe you live in a place where you can't have a lot of place to grow. Well, you can have some raised beds. Um, you can get some five-gallon food-grade uh, five-gallon buckets. I'll give you an example. At um, Firehouse Subs, where we live, they had their big pickle pickles that they use for their subs, um, they always, they, they quarter the pickle out and they have a, a pickle spear in, in every sandwich that, that you get. They sell those buckets after they're used. They make great things you can grow in. They're food grade. You can take those buckets, drill holes in them. You've got the drainage. You can put your soil in and you can grow out of that. So you can have a container garden. So I want to encourage you, begin to garden, begin to have some, some food that you're growing. There's some great benefits to that. Number one is it tastes better. Have you ever had a, I'm not a real big on uh, raw, uh, uncooked tomatoes, but I can tell you this, um, when you have a tomato that's been cooked, especially my brother used to love to come in and he had sliced the tomatoes, put them on a slice of uh, white bread, some bean bread with some mayonnaise, and put a little salt and pepper and he'd have a tomato sandwich. That was a big thing down here in the South. Okay, if you ever have a homegrown tomato and then you have a tomato that was store-bought, they do not compare. That homegrown tomato will beat it to pieces every single time. So when we take and we build our own gardens, we have our own gardens, we grow them, things are going to taste much better if we take care of them right. And you know, during the World War II, it was a common thing. The government put out a uh, thing saying, we need to have victory gardens and let's do your part for the war. Have a garden. Uh, there were rationing things and people began to have gardens and grow things themselves all over the country. Well, we need to have a uh, victory gardens now, especially during this time that uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. We believe that things are gonna get better. Uh, from this coronavirus, but we had a little teeny glimpse of what could happen 
um, during a time where things were shut down. And if things got worse, think about this for a moment. If things got much worse, what would you do? What would you do? Because when the truck stopped rolling, you don't have anything at the store. And so if we grow our own food, we have some food. Second thing we learned from my grandparents was what I'd like to call food preservation. Food preservation. One of the things that happened for our family during the summer, uh, it was fun on one hand, and one hand, it, I hated that time of the year because I knew what was going to happen. My mom was going to break out all of her canning supplies. She was going to bring out all the cookers, the pressure cooker. She was bringing everything out, and we were going to the farmer's market. We lived in Jacksonville, and uh, which is uh, a city, and we didn't live in the country. We lived in, a, in, a, in the suburbs, but man, my mama was Southern. She was country to the day as long, and she believed in being prepared because she had lived through the Great Depression. And so what she would do is we go out to the farmer's market, and she'd buy peas, she'd buy beans, she'd buy whatever she could get fresh from the farmers. And we'd bring those home, we'd go up underneath the car's porch, and we'd sit out under the carport, and I'm telling you, we'd shell butter beans, we'd shell the zipper peas, um, we would shuck corn till you didn't want to see another, another corn ear of corn at all. And she would take those things and she would can them. Uh, she'd put them up in the freezer. And so one of the lost arts is this, it's canning. How many of you that are maybe watching today um, can say you know how to can? You know, you've ever done anything? It's a lost art. We don't teach it. We've not passed that along in this generation. And it's something that we need to learn. And there's a lot of places where you can go uh, probably not right now during the social distancing. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to drink a little something. I've got my God's Chicken, you know, Chick-fil-A drink that was brought to me today. Uh, they were social distancing, so don't don't slam me. Um, but there's places that you can learn. You can go YouTube and learn. Um, most of your county extension offices can help you and teach you and give you the skills to be able to know how to can. One of the things we, my mama used to do, man, she made her own jellies. My grandmama made her own jellies. One of the, one of the things I loved to do was go to Granite Crosby's house because I knew what was going to happen. She was going to cook some good food and she was going to make biscuits from scratch, just like my mama did. Um, and we were going to get to have some homemade buttermilk biscuits but she had a whole chef of nothing but jellies she had made. She had peach jelly. She had grape jelly. She had hot pepper jelly. She had bell pepper uh, jelly. She had all types of things. Like several years ago, my, my daughter and I, my youngest, we made some strawberry jam. And uh, it was my first time trying to make the strawberry jam in a lot of years. And it came out pretty good, not too bad. came out pretty good. Could have been a little bit better. It could have been a little bit thicker. But we learned through the process. And so I want to encourage you, um, begin to uh, pack your freezer. Um, you know, there's different ways to be able to, to sustain yourself if something were to happen. I want to encourage you, food preservation, do the canning, do the, the, the use the freezer, uh, get your meat that you're going to need. Let me tell you, now's the time right now to be able to begin to do those things. Don't wait because if you wait, you may wait too late and not be able to do it. And so another thing you need to do, and I'm just going to be honest with you. Every time you go to the store, buy a little extra. Buy a few extra canned goods so you can have them stored. Buy some rice. Buy some beans. So if something were to happen, God forbid, there was a, a collapse just think about this for a moment. You say, oh, God, here we go. He's one of those conspiracy theorists. You know, no, no, listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying this because I know what happened in the past. My parents lived through the Great Depression where they didn't hardly have anything to eat. But because they prepared, because they lived on the farm, they knew how to have their own food and they could produce it. But in today's society, most of us don't live on the farm. 
Most of us don't know how to do these things, and I'm just calling you to have some attention to it. So start giving, getting a little supply of things. So if maybe, you know, if nothing ever happened, let's say you lost your job and things were kind of tight till you could get another job, you could at least have some food that you wouldn't have to have that bill for. Okay, so there was food preservation. The number three thing I, we learned from our grandparents was this, was cooking from scratch. Cooking from scratch. Now, I'm going to tell you, cooking from scratch is hard work, but it's well worth it because the food always tastes better. My mama was a southern cook. As you can tell, uh, just by looking at me, I like food. And um, we're working on that, getting that down but um, eating more healthy. But my mama was a Southern cook. She could cook the paint off the walls. And she cooked from scratch. Um, I remember the first time she ever used uh, a canned biscuit. That was a big deal in our house because when she made biscuits, she made them from scratch. She f had the flour, she had the buttermilk. She made it from scratch and they were absolutely awesome biscuits. Oh my goodness, you know, they would just melt in your mouth. There's nothing like cooking from scratch. You know, today we have so much processed food and it's not healthy for us. I know that for myself personally because I've lived it. And so I want to encourage you to begin to cook from scratch. Get away from the, all the processed food that you can get away from and begin to learn to cook from scratch. A couple things will happen. Your food's going to taste better, but it's going to cost you a lot less because, you know, I've got a family of four. My wife, me, my wife, and I got two two daughters. For us to go out and to eat $40, that's that's normal if we go out to eat. Think about that for a moment. $10 a piece if we go out to a restaurant to eat. I mean, you go to the burger place, you know, just a meal from one of the burger places, you're going to spend seven, eight bucks just for a meal. But if we begin to learn to cook at home again and begin to learn to cook from scratch and not do so much processed food, not do so much of this microwave mentality, microwave, I got, you know, just, I got to have it quick, 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 quick. And then I got to go. I tell you what will happen. Not only your food tastes better, but you're going to save money in the long run. You're going to save money from it. Well, another thing we learned during that time where we would cook from scratch is we always had a time where we came together around the table and we sat around the table uh, at dinner. Even when I worked, um, I was the youngest boy. There was like 14 years between me and my oldest brother and 10, 11 between me and the middle brother. They were out doing their deal. But when it came time when I was in high school and had my own job, I'm telling you, even when uh, I had my own job and I was working, there would be times that we would have those family dinners. And a lot of times I'd be able to run home because uh, I didn't work too far. And I'd be able to have dinner at home with my mom and dad. And there was a time for us to sit around, be able to talk, find out what was going on with each other. And there was communication. We don't do that now. Um, during this time of the coronavirus thing, one of the things that we've done is my family is, uh, we've come downstairs, uh, we've set up the grill and got the grill going. I've been cooking a lot of stuff on the grill and we've been sitting here outside. We've, uh, uh, in the evenings when it's, it's nice and sitting out on the back porch, we've got a table set up and, uh, we're eating right here around the table and having time together. So instead of us running like everybody running every different direction, this has been a good time during this, even this craziness of the coronavirus that our family's been able to have family time together around the table again. And so I want to encourage you. Those are some things that you can do. It tastes better. It's going to save you money. And you'll have time to be able to sit down, have time to sit down around the table, communicate with your family. Well, hey, guys, this has been Joe Butler from the St. Augustine Outdoorsman, learning from the wisdom of grandma and grandpa in this digital age. I hope this has helped you. Remember the three things we learned today, natural farming or gardening. We learned about food preservation 
and we learned about cooking from scratch. Those were some wisdom seeds from our grandparents. Till next time, this has been Joe Butler with the St. Augustine Outdoorsman, learning the wisdom of grandma and grandpa and the stigical age. You guys take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.